Space Marines are an iconic part of the Warhammer 40k universe. And they're also very good for practicing painting single colors because they're mostly large, flat surfaces. So I wanted to start a series painting up a few Space Marines just to work out how I might approach various colors. Now I asked some friends what color in particular I should start with. And of course, the answer was pink. So, can I paint pink in a grimdark way? Let's find out. We start from a zenithal undercoat using a white ink over black. And then we move immediately to using a contrast transparent pink to shade all of the areas that were left black. This will make sure that our eventual pink has some nice depth to it. For our main color, I've chosen a somewhat desaturated pink. If we're trying to do grimdark, we don't really want a color that is usually so vibrant to pop out quite so much, but we'd still like it to read as pink. Airbrushing this color on over the white undercoat will do well to help bring up the brightness without adding any additional saturation. For the first accent color, we're gonna go with white. And I like to build this up from a light gray, actually, rather than going straight to white, especially when working on smaller details rather than an overall surface. We're gonna use this effect on the shoulder fields, as well as the casing on the bolt gun and maybe a knee pad. With the gray applied, just go right back over those same surfaces with a nice sharp white. Just make sure your paint is nice and thin so that it doesn't show any brush strokes on the final coverage. Now it's time for some gold trim. And in keeping with the rest of this scheme, we've gone with a very desaturated gold using Vallejo metal colors. Try not to have too much on your brush and just let the paint flow going in the direction of most details. We're gonna hit any trim on the armor that we want to be gold as well as the remaining metal on the bolt gun and the chest aquila. Any lingering metal that we want to be a plain silver, we're just gonna pick out real quick in burnt iron. For all the more flexible bits, such as the armor joints and any leather on the miniature, we've gone with a sort of gray black and really thinned it down so that it goes over those textures. With the black done, just make sure to go over and catch any smaller details like purity seals or scrolls before moving on to the next step. Now for the grim darkening, we're going to use a black enamel wash over the entire thing. This step is going to take care of all of our panel lines and recess shading that we need to do 
as well as adding some nice grit and helping to unify the colors over the surfaces. Once this is done, we're gonna let it sit for about an hour to dry. Now that the wash has dried, we're gonna come back over all of the major surfaces with a little bit of white spirits or mineral spirits and a Q-tip or a makeup sponge. This will bring back a lot of our original color while leaving those recesses dark. Just give that all a few hours to cure up and move on to our last detail, which is the glow. We start by picking out any glowy bits in white and then going over them with some thin down fluorescent. Then we'll reestablish the centers of the glow with some more white and then go back over them with some athermatic blue. And there you have it. All that's left is to finish up the base. And I've gone with kind of a neutral wasteland scheme that goes with a lot of my work. Before the reveal though, if you like this video, go ahead and click that like button to let me know you enjoyed yourself. Let me know what you think in the comments. Did I manage the grim dark I was aiming for? And if you'd like to see more, Go ahead and click that subscribe button so you don't miss a video, especially these next few in this series. And as always, thank you for watching and happy painting.